As we approach April 15th, some taxpayers may be filing later than usual, thinking perhaps that they're less likely to get audited that way. But that could be a big mistake. Joining me now for a Fox Business exclusive interview is John Hewitt. Hello, John. He's Liberty Tax Service founder and CEO, one hell of an entrepreneur. John, good to see you. Thanks good for coming you. in. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, the longer I put it off, maybe if I send it in on April 15th, the day of April 15th, they'll be too busy and it'll be better for me. What do you say to them? It has no impact at all. In fact, audits happen a year and a half later. So it, does, it won't even happen until 2016. So it's a non-event. Wow. So, so could it be worse in any way if it, the later I file? Actually, with identity fraud, the sooner you file, the safer you are that someone else hasn't already filed and used your identity. So Why is yes, that now? Is uh, it because whoever is first to file, using your Social Security number, your name, is the first one. So the that fraudsters the will wait and, and, and then put it in the later. So if you, get, if you get yours in earlier, the fraudsters will have a less be less able to, to, to get your ID. The IRS only accepts one return per taxpayer. So you need to be the first to file. So the, the fraud t typically happens earlier and you have to, in order to avoid that, the easiest way to avoid it is to file sooner than later. Well, we have about two weeks before it's due. Is it too late now? Is it, should you have filed before now? Yes, you should have filed earlier, but you still ha you still have several weeks, and over 50 million people haven't filed yet. So uh, you're you're in a big crowd. The IRS has been going through a grind. Uh, part of it is is through no fault of their own. Part of it may be through fault of some individuals there, but they as a result they're in the, they have less money than they used to have. Is that going to affect the amount of audits that they do? It is. The, we just met with the IRS commissioner last week, the industry. What did he a, say? Uh, he said, you know, we're down, we're down 300 million. We're laying off tens of thousands of people. And we're not giving any money to administer Obamacare or immigration reform. So we're in a tough spot. And I think it's caused an unprecedented precedent cooperation between industry and the IRS. The IRS, we're working together to help avoid fraud and, ha and help taxpayers across the country. You mentioned Obamacare. How much of a bigger burden is that on our tax forms every year? It's huge. Uh, it's the biggest impact. It's a game changer. It's, a, it's the biggest tax change in 26 years. So it affects 30 percent of the population and they're going to have to file an extra form. And if they paid their, their Obamacare, they're going to they're get a credit. If they didn't pay, they're going to pay a penalty. And it's a complicated form. It's going to drive people from doing their own return to assisted preparers like Liberty Tech. And it's particularly hard for small business people that don't have a lot of extra help usually with the taxes, right? It is. It's, it's one of the most complicated things that's, that's happened in my 46-year career in taxes. Really? Yes. Wow. Is there, did they do something other than the stuff we know about? Uh, did they perhaps do some things wrong? You've been looking at it long enough to know, I mean, in terms of for tax purposes. If there was anything wrong, it was in the bill that was passed, not in what the IRS has done. The IRS has done a great job at, at uh, putting it on paper. Finally, uh, the, the most overused expression and badly used expression in Washington is tax reform. Every time I hear tax reform, I get nervous that they're going to do something making it more complex. But yesterday we had Ted Cruz come out saying he's going to make that a, a centerpiece of his campaign to try to simplify the tax. Do you think we're going to get any tax simplification as a result of the next election? In my career, uh, there's I've learned that there's three certainties in life, death, tax, and change. It seems like there's almost a fourth certainty that in every presidential election, one candidate or more will say, well, I'm going to simplify tax. But we have a real steps to st simplification now in terms of the flat tax, going flatter. Maybe not a complete flat tax like Steve Forbes has advocated, but something close. Wouldn't that make things simpler? It, it would. The, the problem is, it's, this, is the, this is the difficulty in getting, getting something like that passed. Number, number one is Americans want fair and simple. There's nothing that's both fair and simple. You can't have both fair and simple. Number two is that 30 percent of the Americans pay no tax. And if you have any simple system without exception, they are going to be taxed. Take the 30 percent lowest, lowest income earning Americans and say to them, you know what, it's time you get to pay your fair share. Right. It's tired of those rich people paying the taxes. You get to pay your fair share. How many of them are going to raise their hands and say, I can't wait to pay? Exactly. In any flat tax system, everyone has to pay. And so the poor people are going to be hurt the worst. John Hewitt, founder of Liberty Tax Service. Good to see you, John. Good to see you.